sign everybody here, even though we seem to have one of the worst much <laughs> thumbs <laughs> that I can remember in 17 years here at NTID. Nice to see all of you here. Fine. <laughs> I gave out your fourth assignment, quote, a list of titles for your book report. Those titles are all printed in the list that I gave out last month. The list that has all of the novels, short stories with deaf characters in the R.I.T. Wallace Library. That list. So you both see the title of your book, go to the library, find the book, and this weekend you can begin reading your novel. If it snows more and more, you probably have a nice, comfortable weekend reading a novel about deaf characters. <laughs> Hope you enjoy those books. We will continue with this unit connected with deaf characters in fiction and film. Continue with that. We've been talking about deaf characters in books, mm, short stories, novels, and plays, and films. Seem to wonder if many deaf characters have been included in literature all along. It's true, I'm starting to see a lot of deaf characters in novels, short stories, plays, films. We the first deaf character to appear in any novel was in the book um, <laughs> The History and Adventures of Duncan Campbell, written in 1715 by Daniel D. Fall. Anybody know that name, Daniel D. Fall? Anybody? Does it ring a bell? No, I'm British writer. You know any book he wrote, any of you? Mm -hmm. Maybe you read a book long ago, one of his books, about a man in a boat who was a ship wrecked on an island. Huh. Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe, yeah. One of many books he wrote. D. Fall really was a newspaper writer at first. So later on he started to write novels. One of his novels, he tried to write a novel that appeared to be very true to life, mm, almost as if it really happened. Mm, I quote, all the president's men, things like that, in cold blood, novels that have a lot of truth in them, but not completely. Mm -hmm. But D. Paul knew about a deaf man in London, England, born deaf, went to school, became educated out in the world. He found a way to mm, survive in that uh, novel. 
He has a lot of uh, uh, exaggeration, well, as we will see when I explain things. However, at the beginning of the novel, for two full mm, chapters, the second chapter, very long, almost 60 pages, people described accurately exactly how that deaf man was educated. Mm. Explain that he learned the finger alphabet. And he learned the pronunciation of different uh, vowels, A-E-I-O-U in British, A-E-I-O-U and so on. And the different letters, M, N, B, all of those, and how to pronounce them. And p p p difference between P and B, same as many of you learned in school, p p using the mm, uh, father. P p but, mm, and how teeth for users mm, mm, for us are called pixels, chat, yeah. mm, mm, chat, pixel, first card, mm, C A T, chat, 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 again and again, repetition. That's how deaf really are taught in schools, mm -hmm, most of you. He yeah, describes all of that with mm, exact details for mm, something like 60 pages and through his whole school experience. So the reader feels, ah, default knows what he's writing about. Mm -hmm. And then Duncan Campbell, that's the name of the character, leaves school if he's able to read, write. And lip read, he speaks fairly well, but he's a good at uh, pretending deafness. He's deaf, but sometimes he says, mm -mm 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 -mm. and he always takes advantage of people. He's very smart. He also learns mm -mm 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 dueling. He's an expert in gambler. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So he manages to make money, and he often uh, flirts with the wives of wealthy men, <laughs> and sometimes has an affair with them, <laughs> and sometimes gets in trouble with the husband, <laughs> always escapes. He has many, many court adventures. We call him a... Uh, <laughs> A rogue. Mm. Yeah, but he would be something like modern day 007. Mm. James Bond without the secret service. <laughs> without that. But he's very clever. The reader, because in the first two long chapters, he read with exact realism how Duncan Campbell was educated, the reader begins to believe everything else after that. So that Duncan Campbell almost becomes mm, a superman. Uh, one time, he had three men, he owed them money. Mm, and another man comes who was mad because he was secretly with his wife. And three, four of them come. <laughs> Very exciting, Joe. <laughs> he wounds one, takes the sword out of another one. <laughs> you other the two drop their swords and scram. Duncan Tampa. <laughs> At the end, to make it brief, he meets beautiful Wigo, who's very wealthy, marries her, settles down living in a fine country estate with horses mm -hmm, and everything, becomes country gentleman. And he gives money to the poor, to deaf people, 
you encourage with education of other young deaf children. It's sit down and live a very happy, contented life. Mm. Written in 1715. Very interesting to saw about the same time in England. 1704 05, they were starting to teach the deaf. Our default knew from first hand knowledge his own uncle was involved in education of the deaf. He was a newspaper reporter, so he got some of his uh, facts right. But uh, the other part about the exciting adventures, uh, <laughs> however, it presents on the whole a good image of a deaf character. We know many hearing people do that. Why can't a deaf be the same? <laughs> Get away with some things like gambling, sword fighting, sleeping with married women, and all of those things in 1715. Later on in 1740, another book was written that became a famous classic. And about 25 years ago, it became a movie. Quote, Tom Vaughn's. Maybe you saw that movie. It really was a novel, and that novel pardoned the idea for after Duncan can't bear, except Tom Jones as a hearing person. We have on through lit several other novels with examples of a deaf character, most cars, stereotypes. Types, stereotypes, dark uh, characters, don't change much, often have a small uh, role in the book. But as we approach 20th century, we begin to see now increasing appearance of more deaf characters who had leading roles in novels. One is in the play written by Eugene O'Neill. Eugene O'Neill really is known as America's greatest playwright. He was honored many times. He won the world's Nobel Prize for playwriting. He was still a young playwright at that time in the year 1913. It was only a short time after the sinking of the uh, Titanic. Remember that boat? Some of you saw a movie, The Titanic. Big ocean line carrying 1,500 people or more hit iceberg in North Atlantic. Mm. Other ships far away couldn't get SOS signal or whatever. And what happened? The ship people out there. Evacuate, didn't have enough boats. Many, many people died, and that mm, was a big thing. Hit headlines and everything. O'Neill, who himself was mm, a sailor for several years, got to thinking about that. Probably also thought how important communication had become. So he wrote a play called, quote, Warnings. Mm. In that play, briefly, the first part falls for New York City houses. 
tenement houses, apartment houses. Mm -hmm. Up in one apartment lives the Knapp family. James Knapp is the leading character. Inside the apartment for this evening, family finished feeding. The wife, Mrs. Knapp, is washing dishes. Her daughter, oldest one, 14, is crying them. <laughs> Another child, about four years old, playing on the floor <laughs> with a toy. <laughs> Mother says to the daughter, what's wrong with father? Your father, I haven't seen him for many, many days. He comes in the morning, he eats, goes out, comes, goes. Say him he comes to sleep at night, but that's about all. Uh, wonder where he's been going at night. Thought I don't know, Mom, mm, but he seems to be worried. Mm. Well, the son, yes, but I wonder if he's uh, gambling, playing the cards or something. Mm. And the mother said, oh, child, time to put the baby <coughs> to sleep. Mm, put it to sleep. Mm. Well, it takes her up apron. Mm -hmm. Then the door opens and the son comes in, 17 years old. His pants. Mm -hmm. Too short. <laughs> so, too short. <laughs> he says, Mom, I still can't find a job. Well, then you look hot. I look all day. Oh, look at my clothes. And it's so five years old, and I'm growing more and more. Uh, I need a new suit to impress employers to give me a job, mother. I know that, but uh, we need the money, eh? Uh, son, uh, it's true, I really need clothes. I want to get that job. Mother says, uh, uh, maybe you'll find work tomorrow. Boy goes to sleep, mm, and mother sits down. After a while, a door opens. In comes the husband, James. Sit down. Why, says, where have you been all along? <coughs> well, I've been worried lately. Worried about what? Well, I think I'm losing my hearing. Mm. What? Oh, I swear I'm out of an apron. Oh, really? I'm worried. I think I'm losing my hearing. Uh, and you know, you know that I have a very responsible job. I am the wireless. Mm -hmm. Radio operator on that big ship, the SS Empress. And we have to sail soon. And imagine, if I lose my hearing, what about all the thousands of people on that ship? Why, oh, oh your imagination. Oh, my imagination. I went to the doctor. I've been going to the doctor every once in a while. The doctor says, Russ, you're losing your hearing gradually. So that's where you've been going all along, spending, spending the money. Well, we need things for the house. Jimmy needs a new suit uh, to look for a job. Huh? I know, but I'm worried, and I can't imagine myself going to work on that ship as a radio operator. Why? But we have to have the money. Please, maybe you will come back again. All right, I'll go, but it will be the last time. Next act, so they're in the ship. Far out at sea. Mm -hmm. When we see the interior of uh, 
radio wireless room. Hmm. Same knob seated in front of it. Hmm. The captain. Back and forth. Back and forth. Well, have you heard anything from that ship? You know, our ship hit something. Made a big uh, hole, a wood was rushing in down below. The ship uh, is lifting badly. We need to send our S O S. Save our souls. Have you heard anything from another ship over there? What's the size? I said, have you heard anything from another ship over there? You are responsible. <coughs> I haven't heard anything, sir. I haven't heard anything. Captain. For the last two hours, we'll say the same thing. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything. What's the matter with you? Captain, he talks to me. What's the matter with you, huh? Captain, did you hear what I said? What? Damn it, man! Cracks off of the earphone. Did you hear me? What's the matter with you? Are you deaf? My God, my God, it really happened. Oh, Captain, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't want to go on this last uh, voyage, but we're poor. We needed the money. And my wife asked me to go for this last time. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Sit down. Mm. Captain said, oh, my God, what a time to have deaf wireless man. Mm. He called first uh, mate. You know, any man on the ship who has some experience with uh, wireless, yes, I think I know someone who brings in the man. Captain tells him, sit down, huh? try to contact some ship over there. Wait, wait, wait. Captain, huh? Oh my God! That uh, 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 message says that ship we've been trying, trying for two days to contact that ship over there named the <coughs> the diary is now more than one hundred miles away. Too far to help us, and worse. It says that ship has been trying to warn us that in this area, the water was an old, uh, half sunken ship. Uh, and we couldn't see it because of uh, the fog, but that ship, the, the diary, was trying to warn us. But tough radio man never got the warning. <sighs> Same now. Captain. Uh. Orders. Evacuate the ship. Oh was the boat? And then go out and hmm. People get in, but to row away. Mm. Mm. 
Это Джеймс Нап, вот Бонин, это топ. My fault. Oh, my fault. He runs to uh, Paul. Oh. And he sees the boat being lowered uh, and the ship is sinking. My fault. Boom. Interesting. Mm. So you, mm. well, in fact, loss of hearing can have on a person and on mm, his environment, his society, the uh, where place where he works. Mm. Very interesting. The character is developed realistically enough to make us feel mm -mm, who could happen to anybody and is happening often in life today as we read in the newspapers often things like that. Sometimes that character is used as a symbol we have been discussing in past stereotype stereotype, realistic character who on the whole is realistic, and the symbol, what do we mean by symbol? Maybe another good book written in 1940 by a woman named Carson McCullough. Maybe that can show us how writers sometimes use a death character as a symbol. This story is called, quote, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. In that, the story about deaf man named Von Singer, last name, it's very important. S I N Singer, Singer. Mm, remember that name. He, was, he learned to read and write in school, well educated. He learned a good vocation, that working in jewelry stores as rock repairer and and a graver, he engraves many things, the back of a rock, mm, necklaces, bracelets, mm, trophies, so on. Sean is always well dressed with a tie coat. He works all day in silence. Boss comes to write something for him. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, day at night, he finished work, puts on his hat and coat. Well, he stops at a store to buy box of candy, and another store buys several uh, comic books. Why? Because he lives with another deaf man, a deaf man named Anton. He's fat. He's Illiterate, never learned to read and write. Mm. He loves to eat. He lives to eat, it seems. <laughs> and he loves candy. He brings him candy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Funny book. <laughs> and Von Singer gets home, takes off hat, sits down. Now, oh, daddy, been quiet. Working. Mm. Even people come, says yes, no. Mm. 
But no, <coughs> he can't sing <laughs> with his hands uh, because he has some deaf person who he can't communicate with. That goes on for a while. Then one day, Strom finds that his friend has mental disease and have to send him to a hospital far away. So he decides to live in a town not too far from the hospital. Mm. He moves. His friend is in that hospital. Strong gets the job. Now he looks for a place to live. He finds a boarding house. In that house, father had an accident. Paralyzed his legs. He can't work. He's in a wheelchair. He can't work. They have to rent rooms to people, boarders. John the singer rents one room, live there. They have a daughter, they have four children, but one is a daughter, 16 years old. Her name is M I C Mick, last name K. She loves the music. She dreams of someday becoming a singer. But the father and mother are not interested. They're worried about money. They learn to listen to her dreams. So she goes out, often goes near a concert hall. In the south, it's hot. The windows are open. She sits outside the window. Listen to beautiful music. Sean mm -hmm. Singer has his meals morning and night in a tavern. In that uh, tavern, the owner is named Biff Bannon. Biff can't get along with his wife. They're always arguing. And his wife is going out all the time spending money. Biff finds happiness in listening to the sad stories of different characters who pop up in his tavern. One is Bon Singer, who eats there. He orders the same thing all the time. Spiff sometimes sits down with him and talks. Bon doesn't understand him. He does <gasps> politely listens, often with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> Let the other man feel good. Get his problems off his chest. Well, Pop's another character. Jake Barant, who came from the North, he's brilliant. He has read a lot of books about politics, history, labor. He wants to establish a labor unions in the South, but the people over there are interested. Uh. And Jake often goes to drink, but he has no money. But Biff, who owns the tavern, he lets him drink on a credit and listens to his talk. Jake sometimes sits with Von Singer, the deaf mute, on a Saturday when he's free and talks about many, many things. Von Singer, <laughs> politely, he doesn't understand but makes them feel good. Fourth character is Dr. Copeland, a black doctor who is trying to make the black people in the town feel more pride, make them go to school, graduate from high school, improve themselves, but his own black people won't listen to him. They satisfy to get money in any kind of a job, and Saturday night, go out and have a good time. Dr. Copeland happens to meet Von Singer one day, finds he's deaf. And another time, when the doctor has a deaf black boy who is sick, maybe Von can help communicate with him. 
So he gets him. John happily becomes an interpreter, sends and writes to the doctor what the back sick man says. So Dr. Copeland once in a while goes to visit John the singer and also sits down, talk. What's wrong with the black people? Why don't they have more pride? Why not improve themselves? My daughter is a wife. They won't listen to me. Von the singer mm, makes them feel good. And later, one by one, each of those four go up to Von the singer's room and unburden themselves. John Singer pours lemonade. Well, ask me if you want tea. Uh, thank you. Uh, get everything off that path. But he, mm -hmm. only once a month, he gets the bus and visits his deaf friend in the hospital, brings a box of candy. Comic book, that friend. Ah, 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 You know what I saw happen over there in town? He feels good. That's his opportunity to express himself. His heart becomes happy and sings because he can find someone to communicate with and relate to. Mm. Day arrives one Saturday. Fran Sanger goes to visit his friend and finds he died. Fa, yes, where was he buried? The North Rice. By flowers, he finds the cemetery. Anton puts the flowers there. Why? Why do you have to die? What happened to me and your friend who that can I communicate with now? Uh, why? All oh, afternoon he works up and down, up and down before the grave. Finally, he takes the bus back to town. Works up and down the street, back and forth, back and forth, thinking about his loss. Stops in front of a Gun store looks in the windows. Goes in, comes out, works to his mm, boarding house. Mm. Gets a towel, puts it on the pillow, mm. lays down. <laughs> One each of the four characters, the young girl, the bartender, the black doctor, Frank Brown, the labor union man, when they find out that he died, each one experiences the corresponding loss. Each one retreats, withdraws into his own cell of loneliness. And again, the heart is a lonely hunter. <laughs> Good symbol. So now the deaf character, his life, 
parallel same experience of every man and every woman. Mm. That's what we mean by uh, uh, samba. The dark character becomes symbolic of the need for communication, the need for self-expression in everybody. Mm. You have often heard of communication breakdown, right? You have often heard of only in a crowd, in New York City, with all of those people, all of those apartments, apartments people live in. <laughs> Do they communicate much with each other? <laughs> Many of them are lonely people. <laughs> and they are all here. Stuff didn't invent the communication breakdown. <laughs> that phrase was invented by hearing people. Mm. But writers often like to use a deaf character to give more emphasis, more impact on the idea of communication breakdown or loneliness. Mm. Find <coughs> other play. Something like that, except it's done in a different way. <laughs> it's called, quote, the chairs. Mm, the chairs. How many chairs we have in this room? Eighteen. In that play, there are over 100 chairs. <laughs> this play. Mm, opens up. It was written by Eugene Ionescu, Hungarian playwright in 1950. In this play, stays empty except for two stairs. Mm. Have a big window on one side, another big window on that side, two big windows, over there and back, two doors. <coughs> we see a window and a light, green, green light, and we hear water. Laughing. So people in the audience, remember this is a play, people in the audience hear the sound of water. Uh, and the green light, they understand that house is the only house on a small island. There's water all around. Now, an old man, 78 years old, and an old woman, his wife, 77 years old, seated on the chair. Mm. The old man said, Hey, hey, finally, I'm going to make a big, important announcement to the world, his wife. Yes, just today. Yeah, yes, all my life. My life has been very humble. I've lived like many, many people. Nothing exactly that happened to me. I wanted to say many, many things, but mm, I'm not important. I'm a nobody. But now, now, today, I'm going to make the important announcement and communicate my important message. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wrote. Letters inviting different people from uh, the mainland, uh, and they will come to hear your important announcement. Yes, uh, I hear a motorboat. A boat is coming. Boat, I hear. The old man walks, opens the door. Mm. 
Come on then. Your Honor, George Bronson, good to see you and your wife, Mrs. Bronson. How do you do? How do you do? Why? How do you do? Hey, come on then. Really, nobody comes on. Nobody. Mm. Invisible visitor. Wait, so come on in. So bring two chairs. Wife, bring two chairs. Mm. The, the old man talked to them. I didn't see you for over 31 years. The third one, how many? Two. And he goes to college, one, finish that. The wife talks with the judge's wife. Really, nobody's there. Empty chairs like this. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> After a while, the old man says, I hear another boat coming. Well, excuse me, excuse me. Walk. Come on in. <coughs> My old friend here, eh, you still have a eh, four-hour spot in the town. Come on in. Your wife, come on in. Nobody. Mm. Well, bring two more chairs. <coughs> the old man talks. We didn't see you for 18 years. How's the for our business going? How? And they talk. And for a while, another boat. Two more people. Three more people. One more person. Four more people. Bring, 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 bring. More, more, more chairs. Really, no people are there, really. But the old man and his wife work. Good to see you again. I'm happy you came. And his wife said, soon you will make that important announcement. <laughs> yes, soon. Can't wait. And then comes one person, a real person, comes back hat. A cape stands opposite. He just came on. Oh, man, son. Wife says, well, go ahead and make your announcement. Huh, man? I want to say, to say that. I can, I can, I can, I can. Uh, <laughs> freeze the window, runs, jumps out of the window, bust! People in the theater here, bust! Wife. Runs, jumps out of the window. Bye. All the people in the theater sitting down. What's that play about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you. <laughs> Puzzles. <laughs> now comes the last visitor, a real person. Remember, I told you, black hat, black cape. He looks like Ezra Pound, the poet used to look. <laughs> comes <laughs> to the front. Facing the audience of people.
The pie you buy. <laughs> Come here in the cash from break time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other ideas we got? What? Mm -hmm. Trying three different ways of communicating by voice, writing, and right. then signing and mm -hmm. the audience remembers. Remember, that's really for hearing audience. Mm -hmm. Act. Well, well, really, in the pie, he uses finger spelling. He spells some words and signs. Average theater uh, is full of hearing people who don't know any sign language. Uh, uh, uh. I forgot to bring. <laughs> the Good point. You forgot to bring in your toy for the, uh, this was in 1950. And in Europe, uh, by Hungarian playwright, that time it was not much thought about importance of interpreter. And even even if the writer knew he didn't want to have an interpreter, the point he's trying to make is that life full is full of problems. Life has communication breakdowns. People often trying to explain plus something, they can't find the right person to mm -mm, relate to or confide in. They can't. There's another reason for that. That play is called, quote, an example of theater of the absurd, absurd, theater of the absurd. What's 
the word mean to you? The word. What's it mean to you? Absurd. What else does it mean? Silly. Ah. Doesn't make sense. Uh, question. Does life make sense? Up to now. We read in 1963, President of the United States, a handsome, young, wonderful man made many wonderful progress in America. Boom! Fly up, K. Few years later, his brother, R.F.K. Boom! Few years later, famous black leader, Martin Luther King. Boom! God. Von Lennon, boom, God, uh, raping, recently in New Bedford, terrible act in barroom, mob mm, violence, gangs in New York City, uh, subways, people dying, violence, wonder what's the life about anyway, people plan, and suddenly, boom, all their plans are destroyed. Maybe it's something like what Shakespeare says in the play, Macbeth. Macbeth at the end, he says, Earth is but a walking saddle, a poor player who struts and struts his hour on the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, and signifying nothing. Mm. That play. Makes for think the uh, fair and the use of the deaf character to emphasize the theme or ideas in that play. Theme or ideas in that play. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes you have a writer who likes to use a deaf character in a different way. Mm. Maybe humorous. Maybe to show you the opposite. One of my favorite books, and I think a favorite book of many high school and college students is, quote, The Counselor in the Rye, written by V. D. Uh, Salinger in 1951. In that book about a young teen age, a boy named Holden Caulfield. He's smart, he reads a book, but he doesn't like school. And he can't communicate with his parents. His parents have well to do, have money, but always buzzy, going to cocktail parties out, out, out all the time. Uh, so they send him to private school. In private school, he's always getting in trouble. He sleeps late, late for class. He loves to read books till 2 o'clock in the morning, and then I go to class. He gets in trouble, he's expelled. Another school expelled. One, two, three, a fourth school, finally, the book begins, he's expelled. Ah, he's he going home to New York for Christmas. He has a weekend in New York City and has many different experiences. He lives in a hotel, doesn't go home because he's afraid of what his parents will say because he was dismissed for the fourth time. In the hotel, he sees clear people, <laughs> poor Vart, man who takes off all his clothes, looks before himself in the mirror. <laughs> He sees two other dumbbells together in the room. He sees other people on the street playing craps, pulling out knives. Huh? And New York City, filthy, 
papers thrown all around. Fabric, card, honk, 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 honk. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Since he makes up his mind, he's going to leave New York and the East and go west. Like Horace Gurley once said, go west, young man. Oh, he's working up Fifth Avenue. Cause <laughs> man comes. <laughs> Papers all over. Ah, throw and gum. Finish. He decides, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go west. He's talking to himself. 